Hi, I'm Cynthia Haney, a wood turner and spindle maker, teaching you how to spin yarn with one of my top whorl drop spindles, and the, the whorl is at the top of the shaft. This method is called park and draft. You park the spindle between your knees while you focus on your fiber supply, this being some merino sheep's wool. And to draft, all you're doing is pinching some of the fibers at the end of the fiber supply and pulling them out to make a thinner continuous portion so that you uh, can make some yarn here. And you want to do that till you have about four inches of fiber that's thinner than your original fiber supply of the, and about the thickness of, of what you're going to want to do is yarn. You put that into the hook you fold it over itself, leaving about an inch overlap, and you pinch with what is going to be your fiber hand here with your index finger and thumb at the top of the overlap. Then with the spindle hanging from that, you're going to set the spindle in motion with a flick of your hand, and I'll show you how I'm holding it in that I've got it pinched between my thumb and fingers, and I set it in motion with the thumb out, fingers in motion, and catch it as soon as it stops because now you have a really short springy bit of yarn between the hook and your fingertips. Taking over the pinch with the spindle hand's fingers at exactly the same place, I now can bring my fiber hand fingers back and pinch at the end of that drafted portion to be a stop so the twist, when I release it, only goes where I want it. And that twist is what's making this into yarn. And we just made some yarn. Now, repeating that, keeping the fiber hand fingers pinched. We're going to set the spindle in motion with a flick, catches it as soon as it stops, and do it a second time and catch as soon as it stops. Now you'll have an extremely twisty, springy looking, um, shorter now, bit of yarn. Again, switching which hands fingers are doing the pinching. We now are able to do some drafting while we are making yarn and we pinch at the end of my new drafted portion because all I did was pull back with my fiber supply and let that twist in and we can probably get away with doing that a second time and getting away with you just need to make sure you still have enough twist left that, that springy look, that uh, denser feel to the yarn. When you don't have a springy look or a denser feel you don't have enough twist left. Keeping the fiber supply out of the way behind my hand and of course the fingers with the fiber supply hand pinched we set it in motion again, and because there was a longer portion of yarn called a leader between the hook and my fingertips, there was more places for that twist to go, so I was able to have the spindle spin longer and uh, set it in motion more times and build up more twists there. And we just continue drafting, switching which hands are controlling the twist, controlling whether or not the twist is, um, you know, before the portion we're making or after until we've used up that springy bit and I have enough to do this again and you want to do that till you've run out of the length of your yarns you probably will need to do this a few more times I will do it once more just to show you set it in motion with a spin by flicking your fingers a second time when it stops of course catching it as soon as it stops park it and do some more drafting All I'm doing is pulling back and letting the twist in. And when I go to let the twist in, I'm always pinching with my fiber supply fingers to keep it behaving. Now, I have run out of reach, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to get my fiber supply behind my fiber hand, pinching the end of the yarn between the fingers of my fiber hand. I stick out my thumb and pinky so that I can walk the yarn over the thumb and the pinky until I reach the hook of the spindle. This keeps it under tension so it doesn't get tangled and lets me take my fingertips and remove the end of this yarn we just made from the hook of the spindle. Now we are going to put the end alongside the shaft for about an inch, which is hard to show you because if I let go it's going to go sprung, and wind over itself very firmly until it is attached. It doesn't matter, as you see, it's not a perfect process. It doesn't matter which direction we wind so long as we're consistent in it 
and make sure you are getting over itself so that it will attach for you. There we go. And of course you can be turning the spindle to do this. The advantage of the spindle is it does turn easily so you don't have to, you know, weigh your arms around too much. And when you've left about eight inches unattached the spindle shaft with the yarn at about at the top two-thirds of the shaft, you come up into this handy notch I have in the whirl which helps guide the yarn to the hook and back onto the hook where we can resume our setting it in motion with a spin by flicking our fingers, parking it between our knees, and switching which hang fingers pinch to do the drafting. Now right now in all that handling we got some twist into our fiber supply and it's not wanting to slide. So you just release that twist from the fiber supply while keeping a pinch to keep the twist in the yarn you already have made till it slides nicely again and you can draft. The other challenge you'll run into sometimes is if you have your hands really close together, which how close together varies depending on how long the hair was on the sheet or whatever um, fiber you're using, it's not going to want to draft for you because you're pulling on both ends of each strand. If you pull your hands further apart, it'll draft nicely because you're no longer yanking on both portions of the strand. And when you've made more yarn and are finding that your arms are ready to not have to reach so far, you take it out of the hook and it comes off the notch all by itself and you continue winding on the shaft until you come back up to the notch, into the hook, and you're ready to go. It does not matter which side of the hook you come into, and you are now spinning yarn.